failed revolutionary. Or in the TED world, you'd call me a revolutionary who hasn't quite succeeded yet, and I'm confident I'm going to get my chance with the Boost Revolution. I know that I don't look like a revolutionary. I look like a management professor. I get that. <laughs> but 25 years ago, I was a revolutionary. I was working in a factory, a soap factory, as a manager. There I am in this factory and everything in it, the machines, the relationships, the attitudes, organized in a long, straight, rigid line, according to the principles of scientific management. Scientific management, by the way, developed right here in Hoboken, New Jersey, by our own Frederick Taylor. He had us organized in rigid, straight lines so that we could be more competitive by dominating those lines, and so that we could grow our businesses by squishing the life out of the businesses on either side of our own, which is great if you want to grow a business by sucking the life out of everything around you. I really didn't like that, and I wanted to change it. And when I got made the manager of the um, liquid startup team, liquid soap startup team, I got my big chance. My team and I were going to be revolutionaries. We were going to build our business while building the business of our customers and our suppliers, and it was going to be so great. I mentioned I failed, right? OK. What happened was that every time I tried to get companies together to share and work on something that would benefit us all, somebody would complain that I was not being efficient. And every time that I tried to take something that my team had learned and share it with another business so that their business could do better, somebody would yell at me for giving away our competitive advantage. It was like every time we stepped out to do something different, we got pulled back into line. It was crushing. It was heartbreaking. And we failed. I failed. So I did what failed revolutionaries honorably do. And I went to graduate school. <laughs> now I'm a management professor. And I study how businesses use technology to transform themselves. What I'm seeing in the companies that I study right now has me absolutely convinced that I've got a second chance and that you've got the opportunity to be a revolutionary too. So I study businesses behind online platforms like eBay, Etsy, Airbnb, Dropbox. You've heard of them. All of these businesses are built on a revolutionary technology, digital networks. And in digital networks, there's a completely different way to grow your business. Instead of growing your business by crushing other businesses, you grow your business by connecting businesses with each other all across your network. And what's particularly cool is that some of these companies, while they're busy growing their business, are doing something that frees up opportunity or creates um, new resources for other businesses, boosting their business at the same time. So I call these boost companies, and I've been looking at them really closely, trying to figure out what is it that they're doing that builds their business and boosts others. So I have discovered, sneaky scientist me, I've discovered that they're doing three things differently. They are boosting relationships through communities of commerce. They're boosting skills through um, working out loud. And then they're boosting products through a thing I call compounded gifting. These three practices, which are all supported by network technology, are working together to build the boost revolution. Let me tell you a couple of examples and explain how these work. The first practice, creating communities of commerce, is designed to take potential competitors and turn them into partners in each other's success. So boost companies create online spaces and online events where companies can come together and work on projects that would benefit all of them, work on some kind of shared goal. A company that's doing a great job of this is Etsy. And if you are like me and you shop a lot online, you probably know Etsy as the marketplace for everything that's handmade. But Etsy is also tens of thousands of small businesses that all come to sell their goods in the same online space. So a full third of those Etsy businesses come to the Etsy site and connect directly with each other on business support teams. So if I had an Etsy business or if you had an Etsy business, you could go to your support team and you could say, help me with product branding, help me with inventory management. Or if you had a great idea for the whole site, you could work with a team of Etsy employees and help build something new. By working together in a community, these companies help to 
grow each other's business inside that shared space, and then they also grow the shared space, boosting everybody. The second practice is called working out loud, and it's when a company talks about what it's doing while it's doing it so that they can see what they're doing and figure out how to get better. Now, there are a lot of companies that already kind of work out loud, but they do it inside their company walls, and they keep all that learning private. But boost companies deliberately choose social network tools like blogs so that when they work out loud, all of their stuff is public. So that means that people like you and me can look through into their blogs, into their company, and learn right along with them. Uh, I, I've been geeking out on one particular company's blogs since January. Um, Airbnb, that travel reservation site, has a very slow website, and they've been trying to speed it up. So their software engineers have been trying one crazy experiment after another with different combinations of software. And with each one, they've written about it in great detail, explaining what they learned, um, what they tried, and what they're going to try next. And geeks like me have been reading them and learning along with them. But how many people do you think might be reading those? 10, 100, maybe 200? How about 60,000? 60,000 unique visitors to these blog sites, or these blog posts, reading it, making comments, and taking all of that learning back to their own company. So you've got to ask, why would a boost company want to learn out loud so that everyone else could learn what they worked so hard on? Well, boost companies are going to learn anyway, right? So why not make it easy to share that learning? That way, we can all make fewer mistakes as a group, and we can get smarter faster just by working out loud. So the third practice is something that I call compounded gifting. And I know it's kind of a weird name, but I'm trying to capture this fabulous little feature of this behavior, which is that like compounded interest, this little gift goes out there, and then everywhere it grows, it gets bigger and bigger all throughout the network. Compounded gifting starts when a boost company decides that they're going to take part of their feature or part of their data, and they're just going to give it away to other companies to use for free. They use a software tool, an interface tool called an API that lets them hook up directly with other companies and share their service seamlessly, so it's pretty easy to do. You might, uh, many of you might be customers of Dropbox, that company that lets you save your files off in the cloud. Well, if we had a company and we were building a product, we could just use the Dropbox API to fit file saving in the cloud into our product, and we would send that file saving out into our network of customers introducing them to Dropbox and maybe bringing some back to become full-time customers and build their business. But in the meantime, we've gotten this great feature. We've put it in our product and we've made it better. Then we've given our customers a better product to build their businesses. Yay! It's a gift that keeps on giving because everywhere it goes, that gift gets bigger and bigger. So you're probably thinking, yeah, how can a company that helps its competitors and shares its learning and gives away its product for free ever make any money? That is a really good question. But it turns out that these companies are, in fact, growing and making money. So in 2012, Airbnb had $180 million in revenue. Also, Dropbox had $500 million in revenue. And Etsy, in 2013, is on track to sell a billion dollars worth of merchandise on their site. Yes, folks, I said a billion dollars. And that's just three examples. There are hundreds more of companies that are building their business and boosting other businesses at the, at the same time. And when you think it can't get any better, just wait, because there's more. I know that you're all familiar with the research on happiness that tells about how we long for connection and for mastery and for meaning. It happens that these boost practices create those experiences when we use them with each other. So we create that experience of connection when we work in a community of commerce. We create that experience of mastery when we take what we've learned, all our expertise, and we share it with somebody else. And we create that experience of meaning when a tiny little thing of what we've made goes out into the network and boosts everywhere it goes through compounded gifting. It turns out that it's not the technology that's revolutionary, and it's not the boost practices that are revolutionary. It's the idea that by bringing these two together, 
We can build everybody's business and be happier and more fulfilled at work. Now that is a revolution. And it's a revolution that you can be part of in your job, in your company, in your startup. How do you do that? How do you become a successful revolutionary? You can start by creating a sense of community among the people you work with. You can share what you're learning by learning out loud and telling people what you know. And you can take a little bit of what's special and unique about you, and you can send it out into your network as your own kind of compounded gifting. If we do these things together, we can build a boost revolution, an economy filled with businesses that help each other and help us because we're creating opportunity together. That's the end. That's the revolution.